When you play RPGs, there's a silent contract that every player signs. It's a general understanding that everyone is there to have fun and that you'll help it contribute to making an environment that is conducive to having fun for everyone at the table. But sometimes players forget to sign the contract. So I'm gonna go through some ways to make sure that you are following RPG etiquette and also how to implement them for your group. There are three main categories when we're talking about etiquette. The first thing is what happens before the game is played, what happens when you're playing the game at the table, and what happens after the game is done. So before you ever step foot at the table, here are some things to consider. The first is getting alignment with your group on the type of game that you want to play. This is going to solve a lot of future problems. So making sure that everyone agrees to the system that's being used, the setting, the type of game. So is it going to be more role play focused or is it going to be combat or a mix in between? And a more serious or a more playful scenario or RPG campaign. Making sure you have alignment on your group on what everyone is looking for from the game is going to make sure that everyone is happy and having fun. Along with this is making sure you're utilizing safety tools. So this is an understanding that if there's ever a topic that's approached at the table that someone is uncomfortable with, the game will stop and you can move on away from that topic. But identifying what those hot topic points are before you even start can be really helpful. There are some resources in the description if you're looking on ways to implement safety tools. The next thing you would think that I wouldn't have to mention, but I do, and it's to make sure you have good hygiene. So if you're in person or even if you're online, but most importantly, if you're in person and you haven't showered in five days, maybe you should reconsider. Be mindful of everyone else at the table and make sure that you have good hygiene. Something else to consider is making sure that you're taking turns to pay for snacks. It can be expensive if you guys are getting together every week. So make sure that you have someone that is going to be bringing the snacks and that you're taking turns. This one is gonna help immensely when you're actually playing the game and that is getting to know your character. So what spells or powers or skills do you heavily rely on as your character? Being being able to have a page number or just know the spell is going to be a lot more helpful when you're actually playing the game and help everyone make sure the story is moving forward so you're not pausing every five seconds to look up a rule. Now of course it's okay from time to time if you need to look up something, but if you're doing that make sure it's on other players' turns. And the final thing before you start playing the game is to make sure you show up. A no call, no show is basically the worst thing. Um, it's really disappointing if your GM has put in a lot of work to prepare something and then your player just doesn't show up. So make sure that if you do have an emergency and you have to cancel to communicate to everyone and to make sure that you stay on top of your schedule and show up when you say you're going to show up. Okay, so we've gotten that out of the way. Now we're actually at the table playing the game. The most important thing to remember is to be respectful to everyone else at the table. Your GM has put in a lot of work preparing this campaign or one shot and really wants to make sure you guys all have a good experience. So that means when they're describing things or when they're trying to set up a certain part in the story that you're not interrupting them. You give them the opportunity to explain what's going on and make sure that they get a fair chance to really set up the story that they wanna play with you. And that goes for other players too. If it's their turn and they're doing something really cool, don't try and take the, the spotlight away from them and don't try to interrupt and be rude and not listen. And this goes kind of naturally into sharing the spotlight. So making sure that even if you're really excited about different things, that you give everyone equal chance to participate and share their ideas making sure that you're not always the person that leads things or not always the person that goes after things first. Giving everyone a fair chance to engage with the story and participate is going to be a lot more fun for everyone. Some of the other things to consider is just using basic manners, uh, saying thank you and please is something that is just courtesy and nice to have. Also make sure your group is aligned on if technology and cell phones is okay at the table. We all have complicated lives and sometimes people need their cell phones for various reasons. But having a general rule of no phones at the table unless absolutely necessary is, I find, a good rule to have. 
Just make sure your group is all aligned and you're good to go. Also, when you're at the table, be mindful of how much space you're taking up. If you're someone that has a bunch of different sheets for their characters and a rule book and different pencils and everything scattered everywhere and dice flying everywhere, it's really distracting and can take away from other people at the table. So make sure you contain your space a little bit and be mindful of others. Next, it's important to let players play their own characters. So if you find yourself saying, you should do this, or you shouldn't have done this, you should do this instead, that's not very productive. A role-playing game is something collaborative and lets everyone have their own chance at, at participating in the story. So don't control other people's characters and let them make their own decisions. The other thing that's really important at the table is making sure that you put in effort and are engaged. So if you're constantly distracted and talking about random things that happen during the week, that's not really the place for that to happen. Sure, it can happen at the beginning of the session or at the end as you're catching up with everyone, but during the gameplay, try to remain focused and really engage with the story. Make an effort to try and participate and make sure that you're trying different things and collaborating with one another. Next, be careful how you approach rule discrepancies. Ultimately, the GM has the final say on how a rule should be played. But if you do find that they're playing the rules wrong or different than you would interpret them, it's okay to speak up from time to time. Just make sure you do it in a, an appropriate manner and don't place blame. And then if you really have a problem with something that they're doing during gameplay, it might be appropriate to bring it up after game instead of having an argument in game. And the final at the game tip is to not cheat. Please do not cheat. I don't understand why someone would cheat at a game that is make-believe anyway. So it's not cool to be the person that rolls a dice and then quickly grabs it away because you rolled something low and you didn't like the result. Go with it, the story's gonna work out and it's all gonna be fun. So don't feel like you have the need to change your die rolls or change your stats or do anything that is cheating. Now we've reached post game. This is a great time to give feedback to some of your other players or your GM or if you're a GM to your players. It's a way to kind of do a recap of the session. And if you don't feel comfortable doing it right away, you can do it later or over text message, something that is a little bit more com comfortable for you. But be open to both giving feedback and receiving feedback. So if there's a certain way that someone is handling their combat situations and they're just taking over the, the combat every time, that might be something that you bring up and say, hey, I just wish that I could participate a little bit more in combat. Was wondering if you could be a little bit more mindful of that. I also think this is a great chance to give compliments. If someone did something really cool, they had an intricate plan or they did a great move in combat, it might be nice to go up to them and say, hey, this was really fun when you did this and really cool. It made for a great time at the table or if they're super good at role playing, saying, I really appreciate how you were role playing your character. It was super interesting and it got me to really role play my character too. So thank you for that. And speaking of thank yous, it would be great if you thanked all your players at the table and your GM, just to be sure that they know you appreciate the time that they take to play games with you. In addition, you can always give some ideas you have to the GM. If there's something that you would really like to explore more or you have an idea that would be fun for the campaign, don't hesitate to give them the ideas. Your GM might choose not to use them, but maybe they will. And finally, be prepared to schedule your next session. It's super important that there is some sort of consistency. And so being able to schedule a next session is going to make the whole process a lot easier. Overall, RPGs are a collaborative experience, making sure that everyone is putting in a little bit of effort to have some RPG etiquette will make the whole process go smoothly and make sure that everyone is comfortable and having fun at the table, because that is is the most important part of role-playing games is that everyone is having fun. I hope that you like my content and if you do please subscribe and like this video. I would love for you to check out more information on role-playing games or some specific systems that I delve a little deeper into like Call of Cthulhu or Cyberpunk Red. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!